Welcome to another installment of the Baby Lamour series here on Lamour et La Musique. Today we're going to be talking about my recommendations for postpartum essentials, particularly for a first time mom, because I have a lot of breastfeeding related recommendations. And I think it's especially pertinent if you're a first time mom. I think that breastfeeding gets easier with subsequent kids, but it's really freaking hard with your first. Your postpartum recovery is I mean, there's such a wide variability. Depends on the kind of birth you had, whether it was vaginal or cesarean. It depends on the kind of vaginal birth you had, if you had stitches, what kind of tearing you had, if any, or how, just kind of how your delivery went in general. So I guess just to kind of lay the groundwork so you can know the perspective that I'm coming from, I had less than a six hour labor and I pushed for about 20 or 30 minutes once we were at the hospital. I had a hospital birth, uh, the baby was delivered by a midwife. I had some tearing and I did have some stitches. I never asked what degree tear I had, so they're first, second, or third degree tears. I think by virtue of the fact of getting stitches, it automatically means it's a second degree tear, but I could be wrong on that. Maybe there are first degree tears that require stitches. And then people can either tear on the inside or on the outside, I think. So I don't actually, I didn't really want to know. It's kind of weird, I guess, to not want to know. But anyway, yeah, so I did have some stitches. Other than that, I had an unmedicated birth, didn't have any uh, recovery from medication or anything like that. Okay, first order of business, I think, it, for postpartum recovery is taking care of everything down there if you had a vaginal birth. I can't speak to cesarean birth, but that's I'm sure a whole nother kind of recovery. If you have had a vaginal delivery with or without tearing, labial or perineal tearing, the first thing you wanna do is get that area sort of calmed and soothed. So they start giving you ibuprofen in the hospital and they recommend that you take it afterwards so i ended up taking ibuprofen every four to six hours for like around a week now i am not a big medication person but i did find that this was really really essential and it helped a lot with the pain that i had the pain and the swelling that i had now one of the main reasons i think i may have had a little bit more swelling than normal is because i declined having ice packs put down there now this is a very common practice if you have a hospital delivery they automatically want to throw ice packs into your little um, briefs that they give you. And we'll get to these. I can't believe I still have some of these lying around. They advise you to start putting ice packs down there. Now, at the urging of my acupuncturist, I decided to decline these. It's a very less than ideal thing to put a cold ice pack on your vagina after a vaginal delivery from a Chinese medicine standpoint. I have been seeing an acupuncturist for like over a decade now. It's something that has helped me immensely, particularly in the women's health arena. So putting an ice pack down there can lead to cold invading the uterus, and that is Chinese medicine speak. But it can lead to imbalances and just coldness in that area over time. While the ice packs can give sort of immediate relief that can create other issues, or they might not. So I just decided to be on the safe side. The nurses were like, okay, if you're sure, can we give you tux pads? And I said, yes. So if you don't wanna do ice packs, but you still want some soothing down there, most hospitals will have these. They're basically just like cotton gauze pads that have been soaked in witch hazel. And they do provide like a little bit of a cooling sensation. So I was okay with these. Um, so I would just kind of layer these into like the massive pads that they give you at the hospital because you do continue to bleed, which I'm sure if you're watching this, you probably are already aware of. You continue bleeding for, I mean, everyone's different. My active bleeding was really within the first two weeks and then I was not really bleeding much at all. After that, more like spotting. But so what you wanna do is they give you like these little mesh undies, which people love. And you put one of these in here and then you can do ice packs if you want, um, or they can give you these. Now my, my best piece of advice if you are having a hospital birth is to clean them out before you go home from the hospital. All of the supplies that are in the hospital are paid for by your insurance and they are yours to take. That goes for you and your postpartum recovery care and baby care. But I'll, I'm doing a newborn essentials video after I do this one and I'll talk about that there. But 
you can take like request as many of these as you want as many of these as you want and as many as like the tux pads or whatever as you want now when you get home and you invariably run out of this stuff my recommendations for things to have at home the thing that i used most in the beginning actually were always disposable underwear um i'll link the exact ones that i have that i had down below but there are when i like didn't even really want to be bothered with like you know putting a pad into these just the disposable underwear were easy and i would just put the tux pads right in there once i graduated from those after the first couple weeks i really like the brand um natri care they actually do do a maternity specific pad but i and i think i went through like a box of them and then i just transitioned to their ultra extra pads and the ultra pads so these are unbleached cotton uh without sort of chlorine without dyes or perfumes added to them so this is a really great brand of personal care products to start using and then once you run out of the lovely mesh disposable underwear i really like the everlane high-waisted briefs for postpartum uh, they do a regular brief and a high-waisted brief and the high-waisted brief is just kind of everything order yourself like two three packs of those and you'll be fine they're really comfortable they fit the huge pads like really really well and i just like them and then from there i transitioned into just the regular everlane briefs and now i'm like back in my all my regular underwear the other thing that you should definitely take home from the hospital is a peri bottle uh they will have these for you to start using in the hospital you basically fill it up with warm water and spray down there it feels really soothing and nice honestly because that area just tends to be again swollen you know tender so you don't really want to wipe um after you use the restroom so this is nice and i used this for probably like a month after the other two products that i had waiting for me at home and came really highly recommended are the earth mama herbal perineal spray so i think this is particularly if you have perineal tearing but i just think it's good in general for postpartum vaginal care if you had a vaginal delivery similar to the witch hazel tux pads i think like this has witch hazel in it yeah water witch hazel glycerin cucumber lavender and peppermint so it's just like soothing and nice it makes you feel a little refreshed and soothed down there and then i also had a box of the herbal sits bath i never actually took a sits bath because frankly i just like didn't have time or the the bandwidth to do it but what you can do with these in which i did is depending on if you want like a warm or cool compress down there i would suggest warm from a chinese medicine perspective you can just take the bags and get them wet in warm or cool water and stick them right in your underwear and the herbs are kind of acting as a, a poultice if you will or a compress so these things i think definitely help with just getting the area reducing the inflammation and the swelling and getting everything kind of comfortable again okay why don't we talk about breastfeeding related stuff before we get into products i have had a very complicated breastfeeding pumping journey if you want to hear about the personal side of that i actually did a video on patreon about our breastfeeding journey three months in i think for a lot of women i'm sure it's very uneventful baby latches your milk comes in it's very straightforward I mean, I think regardless, it is a skill that, that you and the baby have to learn, but a lot of women run into challenges and I certainly did. So the products that I would recommend having at home, if you are planning to breastfeed and there is no shame, if you do not want to breastfeed for any reason, yes, it is optimal nutrition for babies, but it's totally a personal choice whether you want to do it or not. Okay. I really liked these, the Earth Mama booby tubes. These are gel free breast packs for breastfeeding. So these are really good in the beginning, like when your milk is coming in and your body is kind of learning how to make milk. So you can either heat them up in the microwave or you can put them in the freezer depending on if you want hot or cold stimulation and then they just kind of uh, fit around your breasts so i used them primarily warm to help with my letdown and i had like some clogged ducts in the beginning um just because i wasn't like emptying my breasts fully or often enough um so these were great i would highly highly recommend having these around also in the beginning you don't know if you're gonna have 
you know, and oversupply, you can be leaking a lot. I actually was leaking from the second trimester on. I was leaking colostrum, and then I had quite a bit of leaking in the very beginning postpartum. So these are really nice bamboo bees. These are reusable, very, very soft, like cloth pads that just fit right in your nursing tank or bra and they help not get your shirts totally soaked with milk. They're just a, really nice to have. There are also disposable ones that, uh, again, this brand, Natura Care, makes disposable nursing pads. So these are great, um, especially because if you're nursing the baby on one side, you'll tend, most women will tend to get let down on the other side. So you can either use a nursing pad to catch that, or if you have really substantial letdown on the other side, you can get something called a haka which is essentially a manual silicone pump and you can catch your letdown in that. I have one, but we kind of stopped using it. We stopped using it because I was nursing with the My Breast Friend pillow and I wasn't able to use that nursing pillow and the haka at the same time, so I kind of gave up. But nursing pads are a really nice thing to have. And then I do think it's nice to have a nipple butter because I do think if you're a first time mom and learning how to breastfeed, your nipples can get sore and chapped. And mine didn't even have it happen right away, but within the first four to six weeks, I went through periods of having just like really sore nipples. So I have both the Earth Mama nipple butter and the Zoe Organics. The Zoe Organics I think is better. In general, I really like the Zoe Organics products and I think that they're a step above in quality from Earth Mama. The Earth Mama products are, are really nice too, um, but I like the Earth Mama stuff better for like the perineal spray and the booby tubes are really nice. But yeah, I would recommend the Zoe Organics Nipple Butter. It's just a little bit richer and I just liked it a little bit better. I did also have and never used the Earth Mama Organic Perineal Balm, which is for massaging the perineal area afterwards um, if you had tearing, which I didn't have there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. <laughs> um, another thing I ended up getting, by the way, Amazon Prime is a really, really nice thing to have as a new parent because I feel like in that the first month or two, we were just constantly ordering things off of Amazon. It was kind of a lifesaver. I picked up these Medela Tender Care Hydra Gels, which are, again, nipple patches to soothe sore nipples. Medela is a very well-known breast pump brand, and they do like a lot of breastfeeding accoutrement. Instant relief for sore nipples, cools on contact, contour for fit, and they're reusable. I used these a couple times, and then, to be honest, like you just kind of end up toughing it out, and then you adjust. Um, but yeah. They come like this and they're nice to have. Okay, the other thing you are probably gonna wanna have if you're planning on breastfeeding, whether you're planning on exclusively breastfeeding or pumping, you are probably going to wanna have a breast pump around. So this breast pump gets tons and tons of raves. It's the Spectra. I can't remember if I have the S1 or the S2. I have the one that it does have to be plugged into uh, an electrical socket. The other version is rechargeable. So you can use it. You could like take this in the car. It's like the exact same size. It's just rechargeable, rechargeable battery. So you could use it as a travel pump. So the reason I went with this one is because I could have opted to get the rechargeable one, but it would have been a hundred dollars more if you are not aware under the affordable care act every woman having a baby is entitled to a free breast pump through their insurance every calendar year i think i think it also varies by insurance plan but there has also been the sprouting up of these third-party vendors who will be basically be the interlocutor between you and your insurance company so i used aeroflow.com so if you go there it's very very easy to do you pick out like the breast pump that you want and your uh, healthcare provider, OB or midwife's information. And then they contact your insurance, they get billed for it, and then they send you the breast pump. So you don't have to actually interface with your insurance at all. It's super, super easy. So that's how I ordered this. And so what ends up happening is, I think this is like a two or $300 pump that I got for free. And if I had wanted to pay $100 more, that rechargeable breast pump is like 400. So you see what I'm saying? You are also entitled to get replacement breast pump parts for free through your insurance. So there again are other companies that do this. Aeroflow wasn't able to do it with my insurance, but there's another local to Chicago company called Ashland that has sent me free breast pump parts and they contact my insurance for that. So that's things like the tubing and the backers, which are I'm actually washing right now and the flanges and the bottles and things like that. 
Um, another thing that I don't have, basically whatever I pump, the baby gets that day or the day after. But if you are someone with an oversupply or exclusively pumping, you can freeze breast milk. And so the best breast milk freezer bags that were recommended to me are the ones from Target. So I'll have those listed down below for you as well. So as far as products, body care has just taken on like an entirely new meaning since I, I had a baby. It's such an embodied experience. And then adjusting to the occupational demands of having a baby is really hard on your body. A lot of times you're craning your neck and your wrists start to hurt. It's just tough. So after your active recovery, whether you had a cesarean or a vaginal birth is done, taking a warm bath, it is like a bliss I cannot tell you. I have been raving about the Persoma products since uh, I got to try them through the Beauty Heroes bundles. Please, if you are planning to have a baby, pick up some of these. I mean, they don't have to be these, but I just think that these are the most beautiful bath experience ever. You could, of course, also just do Epsom salts. But again, you're gonna wanna hold off to take like a hot steamy bath down there. I would say at least until you're two or three months postpartum. I think I started like after I was three months postpartum. Um, another body care product that I don't think I could live without now, and it came into my life at just the right time, I've also been raving about this, is from Iuna, and it's their Spirulite uh, loofah embedded soap. This just feels so good on your body. I think also as you're adjusting to not being pregnant, I, there's almost like um, like a molting or a shedding process that happens. That happens with your hair starting like three, four months postpartum, you start losing a bunch of hair. But I also just felt like my skin has needed a lot, a, a lot of exfoliation and just a lot of extra TLC. So I use this like multiple times a week. I really, really like it. Um, and then you just want like really nice skin nourishing products. So I talk about this all the time. I just ordered two new bottles of it. The CB Skin Labs Body Repair Lotion. This one is empty. It is absolutely blissful. This was in my pregnancy essentials video. And then I keep meaning to do, uh, I have to do a favorites video. I haven't done one in forever, but this will be in it. This is the Organic Calendula Body and face oil from the brand Bodyceuticals. Now, I wouldn't have known about this brand except that one of my lovely Lamore followers and patrons on Patreon runs this company. And when she found out that I was expecting, she sent me a beautiful care package of products for me and the baby. I adore it. I think I've also become, since having a baby and, and still breastfeeding and pumping, um, just still like sensitive to scents. I can't really take a lot of overly fragrant or scented body care products. And this is, is basically unscented. It smells like a very sort of light olive oil, which is the first ingredient, but it's so nice and nourishing, particularly if you developed any stretch marks during pregnancy and you want to kind of work on them. And then the other product that I'm so happy that I had is the Beneath Your Mask Whipped Skin Souffle Body Butter. It smells like lemon drop candy and I would use this on my like super chapped hands and it's a little bit much as an all over body butter, but the aromatherapy when you are super sleep deprived with a newborn, you use some of this as like a hand balm in the morning and it would like brighten my whole day. This I believe is still available as a limited edition indie discovery through Beauty Heroes and all of the products in the Beneath Your Mask have a, the same lemon drop type of scent. There's also an oil and a body scrub. So I think that if there's like a mom to be in your life or you're a mom to be, uh, so nice. Another thing that I was not banking on happening was how dry and chapped my lips would be postpartum. It also didn't help that I had a late fall, early winter baby in Chicago where it's just cold and dry, but I had the most dry, cracked, chapped lips like all winter. Nothing I was using worked. I tried the Henne lip mask, which actually made them worse. That's going in a disappointing products video. My Osmia products were not cutting it. I did an Instagram post on this actually. And what ended up finally working for me was the Laneige lip sleeping mask. One of my really good friends also had really dry postpartum lips and she recommended this. Uh, I use it every night now. 
and it has helped keep my lips in like way way better shape this is like an amazing product uh, it has beta glucan in it which is a, my skin responds super super well to that and it also has like an interesting technology that helps your lips really retain moisture okay the last thing i want to say in sort of the beauty product realm so i cannot rave enough about how important i found facial gua sha for myself as postpartum. Now, having a baby is just, it's like the biggest bomb dropping on your life. Um, and everybody says that, but when you go through it and experience it, it's just a whole thing. If you can even have like 10 minutes uninterrupted to yourself in those beginning stages, you know, I'm sure that the the advice is to do like self-care and that's essentially what, what gua sha is. But for me, gua sha is really, it's like a meditation practice mixed in with a beauty ritual and you see instant results. My favorite time to do it is in the morning with a cup of tea. I still do it now whenever I can. I do a 10 minute gua sha practice. I ended up purchasing some of the Brita Beauty gua sha tutorials. It really sets the mood for the day. Now you could do that with a yoga practice or a straight meditation practice, but I just found facial gua sha and jade rolling to have a profound impact on my postpartum psyche. So let's talk about a few just kind of general wellness and lifestyle types of things. I actually should have probably mentioned these in the breastfeeding section, but I highly recommend stocking up on some H&M nursing tanks. I lived in these for legit the first three months postpartum. I didn't wear like anything else. They're really just nice to have in the beginning until you kind of know what size nursing bra you might need. But yeah, they just clip down. They're really comfortable. You could, I think you order them as a two pack. I have six of them or eight maybe. I still like, I sleep in these. I find that I used to go braless quite often. I would always sleep braless. And since having a baby and breastfeeding and pumping, like it's very uncomfortable to be braless. I don't know if it's like, I don't know what it is, but I, the sort of shelf bra in this is just supportive for me and nice. If you wanna graduate away from nursing tanks, I also tried other nursing tanks and the H&M ones are my favorite. Um, if you wanna graduate away from nursing tanks, I really like the Bravado nursing bras. I have two of the, I'm not sure if they're called the Buttercup one. I have the one that doesn't have any underwire. It's like a non-underwire nursing bra. I have two of those and I like them a lot. Bravado also does a hands-free nursing bra that I really did not work for me and was kind of a waste of money, so I don't necessarily recommend those. Um, but the regular nursing bras I do like quite a bit. <laughs> this is kind of random, but it was a really big like quality of life improvement. I got these for Christmas. A pair of Apple AirPods. Now you would think that it's like a totally superfluous thing, but having wireless headphones, I, they're actually, oh, here they are. Having wireless headphones when you have a baby, when you're breastfeeding, when you're pumping, going on walks with the baby, these are just so nice to have. Um, I know that they're kind of expensive, but I love mine. Like I love, I use them every single day. It's so much less stressful than having wires everywhere. So these are just like a really nice, gift and treat to yourself. Um, I love them. Another thing you're going to want to have a lot of are easy snacks to eat. Don't even get me started on how terrible parental leave policy is in the United States. It's an abomination actually that, you know, most women get max three months of maternity leave and a lot of women get less than that and not even to mention that partners don't get unless i guess you're in california and then you're one of the lucky ones especially even if you have like a month at home with your partner that's amazing but invariably usually someone has to go back to like a mainstream job also don't get me started on how effing irritating it is to hear like are you gonna go back to work like i'm gonna actually rant about this in um my patron exclusive video for this month. I'm gonna talk about like my process with all of that, my career and what's going on with all of that. So if you're interested, you can hop over to Patreon uh, for that. Anyway, back to snacks. You're gonna wanna have really, really quick things to eat, particularly if you are breastfeeding because you will be so hungry, you will not even know what to do with yourself and thirsty. Peanuts from a Chinese medicine perspective are actually really, really good for breast milk production as are black sesame seeds, which is very random. I don't, I'm not able to incorporate black sesame seeds like as much 
Everybody says oats are good for breast milk production and they, it, the only reason people say that is because the process of breast milk production is has a lot to do with gut motility and your breast milk is actually made from your blood, I believe. I had an amazing lactation consultant who was explaining the whole thing for me. So oats like really, if they work for you, great. Like I just think it's like the whole, and I ranted on this in my breastfeeding journey video, there are a hundred and one you know, foods and drinks and things and, you know, cultural norms that are supposed to be good for lactating moms. And yeah, like who knows if it works for you, great. If it doesn't like, don't feel bad because everyone is different. Um, so I would, I always have these around either the Lara bar peanut butter chocolate chip bars or just the straight peanut butter bars. And still like I have these like in the morning with a piece of fruit for a really quick breakfast because there's so much unpredictability with the baby. So much focus is on the baby once you have the baby. And I feel like women's bodies and women's health gets like really put on the back burner and it's a really big problem. Having a baby in your body for nine months and going through the process of labor and learning how to make milk and breastfeeding is the most like epic thing the human body can do. You really need, I believe, need to be conscious about caring for yourself and regenerating your body. There's kind of like the nutritional and herbal aspect of replenishing your blood, your vital fluids. From a Chinese medicine perspective, what happens is after giving birth, your fluids are like basically drained for you. That's why a lot of women experience postpartum dryness, whether that's like dry skin, dry lips. I had dandruff. Your body's fluid levels just get like totally out of whack and crazy. I think it behooves women, and this is the thing too, because there's no structure of like real support from society, unless you're fortunate to have family, actually helpful family that you want engaged in caring for your baby, which like, even if you have family nearby, you might not want their help with your baby. But anyway, this is like a whole socio-structural argument about caring for kids, like your own health can often just take a beating and those issues can show up way farther down the line and it can be hard to link the two, um, especially with sleep deprivation, which just exacerbates the whole thing. Postpartum acupuncture, I think is incredible for the way the acupuncturist that I'm currently seeing described it is like flushing the toxicity from birth, like out of your system, kind of like stagnant fluids, stagnant blood. Um, it's kind of like a flushing process. And then after you've kind of, and you could do this through like targeted lymphatic drainage uh, massage, body work in general to just start getting, your organs have all shifted. Those are gonna gradually shift back over time, um, flushing things out and restoring the healthy, non-pregnant balance of fluids um, I think is just really really important so postpartum acupuncture I also am a huge 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 proponent of pelvic floor physical therapy it's it's such a shame that most insurance doesn't cover this. In Europe, it is way more widely prescribed and used um, that after having a baby that women will go see a pelvic floor physical therapist for like six to 12 sessions, depending. What it essentially does is help you re-strengthen your pelvic floor, which has been completely stressed by by having a baby and it's why a lot of women have you know painful urination urinary incontinence painful intercourse when they try again i just can't say enough about pelvic floor physical therapy i found mine in chicago it was referred by the chiropractor that i saw during pregnancy and now postpartum she referred me to pelvic floor physical therapists and i went starting at uh, six weeks postpartum and I went for, I think two months, I think I had like eight sessions. They do both internal work and exter external work. I think it's so much better for your body than just like jumping into like traditional core exercises. I just highly recommend seeing a professional if you can, but unfortunately um, a lot of women just don't have the support financially or otherwise to do it. So I think we all just need to become activists around postpartum healthcare for women because it's like just, a travesty that you know we don't get the care that we really need related to acupuncture uh the other acupuncturist i see and who i saw during pregnancy gave me one of these uh postpartum ear chart kits auriculotherapy um so it's basically just putting ear seeds in uh your ear and it can help with all the things i was just talking about 
Um, it's stimulating particular acupuncture meridians in your ears. There's like a uterus point, kidney point, endocrine, hormone balancing points. Um, you can help alleviate pain in the genital region or the pelvic floor. You can help with uh, lactation, things like that. So uh, these are a really, really nice thing to have around. I didn't use a ton of them because I was sleep deprived and stressed, but um, you know, this is not something that you have to do immediately postpartum. There's something that you can do, you know, over the course of the first year after you have a baby. I wanted to follow up on the thing that I was saying about um, the body work like the lymphatic drainage massage or postpartum acupuncture clearing things out So after things have been cleared out and you're working on establishing healthy fluids If you are planning to have more children in the future I think it's really important to I guess kind of like prepare the your uterus to have another pregnancy I think in Chinese medicine the eye and probably in Ayurveda and other cultural health traditions spacing kids it like larger chunks than we might do uh, is ideal but if you kind of know in your head when you like from a family planning perspective when you might want to try to have more children and you communicate that to your healthcare provider particularly an acupuncturist they can help with the draining of the previous pregnancy and preparing you to have um, another successful healthy pregnancy the last thing that I'll leave you with from a uh, mental health and emotional adapting to new motherhood also known as matrescence is going on instagram and following dr alexandra Sachs, md she is a reproductive psychiatrist i believe she coined the term matrescence which is if you think about a life stage process like adolescence and all of the changes that you're going through as an adolescent you go through a similar life stage transition when you become a new parent. So you could also be going through patrescence if you're a father. If you are an adoptive mother, you're going through matrescence. It's not just about the physical process of having a baby, but really kind of the holistic framework of what it means to become a new parent in whatever context that looks like for you. So I highly recommend her work. She has a very, very highly viewed TED talk about this issue. And I think she's just having really important, she's bringing a lot of important awareness around the socio-cultural aspects of parenthood, primarily from a US or Western centric context. A lot of her, her posts on Instagram and the topics she raises like really, really resonate. Okay, one more quick thing. I should have mentioned this with the breastfeeding thing again. If you also are not aware, in addition to your health insurance paying for a breast pump, they also have to pay for you to have an in-home lactation consultant come to your home and help you with breastfeeding if you want it. A lot of times you have to fight with insurance companies about this because they'll say that the person that you have is out of network, but there's a whole protocol for appealing that and there is you know, verbiage in the ACA about their responsibility to reimburse you for an in-home lactation visit and follow-up visits. If you're in Chicago, I have a wonderful person I could recommend. I will leave her information somewhere or upon request. Um, I think I had two or three visits with her. Even if you are just not sure if you're exclusively breastfeeding and you're concerned about your baby's weight gain or are they getting enough milk, what a in-home lactation consultant does is they come in with a scale and they watch you breastfeed and they will weigh your baby before and after a feed and they can figure out how many milliliters or ounces of milk your baby is getting um, like very accurately and they can also help you with latch issues or breastfeeding positions and just like anything if you're having breastfeeding struggles they can point you in the direction of donor milk resources or techniques to try and increase your supply they're just like really a wonderful wonderful resource and i always think that i'm like gonna have a nice concise neatly packaged terse video and it just never happens um i obviously know that this series of pregnancy postpartum newborn related topics are a niche part of my content so i'm still making beauty content don't worry but i do really want to get this information out i hope that it helps some of you i would love to chat with you in the comments below and hear about your own postpartum experience or any questions that you might have thank you so much for being here and i'll see you guys really soon